Welcome back to Half Moon Tech Labs. Something a little different today. I'm out here in the uh, lawn shed in front of the John Deere. You can see it's a 100 series. This is the LA-175. Uh, not a ton of hours on this thing, actually. It only has about 150 hours. Um, but uh, we've already uh, spun a bearing out on this. And this is what we're looking at here. These sheaves. I'm going to open this up so that we can get a better look. But these sheaves, there's one, two, and there's another one out in the back that are exactly the same construction, the sandwiched uh, shell construction with a bearing captive in the middle, all riveted together. Let's get this cover off and we'll take a closer look. Okay. These we're not worried about. These are on these tower spindles. Those are okay. It's the sheaves that we want to take. Oh yeah, look how sloppy that is. Okay, let's pull that nut off. Okay, and to get this out, I'm going to pop this belt real quick. Go. Cool. And this should, I believe, just. Yep. Okay, you'll stay there. And there it is. So here's the uh, here's the sheave. And it, as you can tell, it's riveted together. It has a, I can see it right there, 6203 bearing. It's a very generic bearing. These bearings are a dime a dozen. I mean, you can buy them for five to 10 bucks just about anywhere off the shelf. But if you go on eBay or Amazon, you can buy 10 packs of these bearings for like $12, $15, which makes them about a buck and a quarter a piece. <laughs> so anyway, the sad part is John Deere wants you to buy this entire assembly when that stupid $2 bearing dies, you want you to change this $30 part that is meant to be not serviceable. Well, I got news for you. We're gonna make it serviceable. We're gonna drill these out, pull this apart, put a brand new bearing in, and then we're gonna put it back together with uh, nuts and bolts. And that way from here out, I won't have to spend $30 a piece when one of any of these three go. We'll simply take the nuts and bolts off, drop in a new bearing, be back in business in minutes for a fraction of the price. Okay, let's take a look. So here's a little closer look at the sheave. Now that it's been removed, wiped down a little bit, you can see where it's been riveted, eight rivets. This is a clamshell type construction, two pieces, identical. They're just simply placed together. I can see where there's an additional hole here and here. Most likely those are for manufacturability for when the uh, for when these were first assembled and um, just for alignment and as sort of a, a jig to hold it in place while the welding took place, whether that was manual or robotic, it doesn't matter. They most likely just drop this whole assembly onto a jig uh, and then hit these rivets and then pulled it back out and that makes sure everything stays in alignment. We're going to use these holes for the reverse purpose, we're going to put a screw through each one of these and a nut on the back. And we'll do that on both of them. And that's so that as I drill these out on the drill press, um, as we get towards the end, uh, there's going to be a likelihood, most likely, for this thing to shift around. And we don't want that to happen when I'm on the drill press. So I'm just going to reuse these holes that the manufacturer used to put it together, in our case, to help take it apart and hold it together until all the drills until all the drilling is done. Um, the rivets, if you've noticed, this, this kind of a fat side over here, and then a larger diameter, uh, flattened out, much thinner side on this side. We're gonna drill through the side that looks bigger uh, here, but is much thinner. That'll be easier to drill out. So we're gonna uh, set up a quarter inch uh, drill. Once I put these uh, bolts in place, we'll get over to the drill press and we'll start uh, start drilling.
Okay, you can see we have the uh, nut and the bolt through just for our alignment holes to hold this in place as we drill these out, like we said. Um, one last thing, I'm going to center punch each of these to make it easier to locate the drill, and then we'll start drilling right after. All right, center punch, ready to go. Let's go over the drill press. We're just gonna go down just enough. We're not gonna punch straight through. We're just gonna go down enough to uh, expose the base material and then we're gonna stop. And then we can just knock them out with a with a punch or, a, or something sharp. So let's get over the drill press. All right, now you can see we've got them all punched out. All eight have been exposed. Now I just have to make sure that we run the quarter inch drill down through each of these holes. We're gonna leave these uh, alignment screws in that I've put in intentionally. Or we're gonna re-drill these eight holes so that they're exactly a quarter inch. And then we'll uh, take out the bearing. We'll separate this thing. Here we go. Okay, let's, uh, let's remove these 
Well, actually, let's put a mark on this first so that we remember which side was which. We'll just do this in a place where we won't be bothered. That way I can remove these and know that I'm putting it back on and not 180 degrees out. I want to make sure this alignment's perfect here. So uh, let's take these out. this falling right apart okay and there there's the bad bearing just sitting inside there so once these two sides are apart all I'm gonna do is tap this bearing out just press that in there 6203 bearing. That thing is grumpy as hell. <laughs> All right, let's clean this up and drop in a brand new bearing. All right, I went on Amazon and I was able to buy some quarter 20 uh, black oxide coated um, uh, cap screws. And uh, so these are button head cap screws. I got that on purpose. I don't have to use a washer with this if I drill these properly. Also for the other side, we've got quarter 20 nuts with shake-proof nylon inserts. Again, we won't be using any uh, washers, don't need to. Uh, these will hold all by themselves. There's eight of them, and with that, uh, with that locking function on there, uh, these won't come off, and uh, there won't be any additional hardware needed. So let's drop a bearing in there. Uh, these are the bearings that I got. I got these pack of, like I said, I got a 10 pack of 6203s, brand spanking new for about, I think it was like around $12 or and change with shipping. Maybe it came to 15 bucks or something like that. But anyway, about a buck and a half a piece, give or take, uh, when you buy them in bulk like this uh, versus spending five to $10 each if you were to buy them singly. Um, but um, anyway, that's going to work. So let's drop that in here. Snaps right in. Make sure we have, you see that just pressed right in there. Okay. Uh, look for our alignment. There we go. Okay. Now we can drop the quarter 20 nuts and bolts in. And we'll see how that works. a lot better. I'm just holding it with an Allen wrench on one side, tightening these on the other. I'm just going uh, hand tight to start with and I'll go around in a pattern and tighten them all up.
Okay. And there we go. We have quarter 20 button head cap screws going through one side, these black oxide type. Um, you don't need to get stainless or anything crazy like that. These are these sheaves are made of steel anyway, so just get a, a just steel cap screws. We have the quarter 20 uh, locking nuts on the back. Uh, did that so that we didn't even have to use washers. Uh, this ended up working out perfect. The sizes that I used on this, oh, well, that's sturdy. That's nice. Brand new bearing. Look at that. But anyway, that's how it works. And um, I'll show you what I, you know, these are the uh, you know, 10 pack of 6203 bearings. That's, that's the bearing that my particular sheave takes. Um, it does vary by, by more model, but uh, uh, same principle applies. You can get these for dirt cheap if you buy them in 10 packs off of eBay or Amazon. Um, the, uh, again, these are also off of uh, Amazon. These are uh, button head uh, socket screws, uh, 50 pack of quarter 20s. And um, uh, these ended up working out great. Uh, same thing with the uh, black oxide uh, matching nuts with the nylon um, locking insert. Uh, so those are, uh, um, these are, these are dirt cheap. Buy a 50 pack of each of these for, for practically nothing. And, uh, and the bearings, again, a dollar something a piece. Now I've got all the parts I need to do the other two, uh, which I'm gonna go do next. I won't bore you with that. I'll just show you that uh, that's how it comes out. It's got a brand new bearing now, and that'll work perfect. And I'm going to do the other two after this, and that mower will be good to go for, I don't know how many hours, but uh, <laughs> next time the bearings go, not a problem. I've got a whole box of them. Ta-da! There it is, brand new bearing. And now we have a sheave that can be easily disassembled, and we can change those bearings at will for a recurring cost of $1.50 per sheave now. Uh, the rest of it's a sunk cost. We've got the nuts and bolts, which are reusable. The bearing is the consumable item. And now instead of replacing the entire sheave for 30 something dollars, we can change just the bearing for about a buck and a half, do it ourselves in a matter of minutes. And uh, that should do it. Hope this saves you some money. And thanks for tuning in to Half Moon Tech Labs. Take care.